Hello, Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce members. This is Drew Camp, President and CEO of the Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce for our March 11th weekly legislative update. We're coming up on the second uh, legislative funnel that will be next week on the 18th when bills that were passed by the Senate have to be passed out of the respective committee in the House and those passed by the House have to be passed out of the respective committee in the Senate. That is except bills that are leadership bills, ways and means bills or appropriations bills. So we expect it to be another busy week up at the Capitol next week as they get uh, ready to hopefully reach their target adjournment date, potentially before Easter. But when you have per diems in line and the additional funds that that provides them, sometimes they like to stay in until that time has run out as well. Just touching on some of the key issues that we've been watching and monitoring um, this week in the legislature. Uh, there are a couple tax bills that were introduced this week from Senator Dan Dawson, um, our local senator here in Council Bluffs who chairs the Ways and Means Committee. One is a sales tax bill to address computer peripherals, insurance, and banking to try to shore up some of the re receipt and collection of sales tax. Uh, that's something that could have big implications on the state budget, but also locally with our local option sales tax. The mayor has noted multiple times that we're missing out on some of the local option sales tax that goes towards our infrastructure investments here in the community, right about $10 million a year, just under $10 million a year. And that's something if we start collecting those pieces of the sales tax through those computer peripherals, insurance, banking, some of those other pieces that we're seeing with technology and some updates and advancements within the market, that's something we think we can hopefully get some additional revenue. So we appreciate the Senator bringing that bill forward and we look forward to hopefully seeing it move forward. Another bill that was brought forth by Senator Dawson is one that addresses I will and the three eighths cent sales tax increase to kick in uh, the funding of the Natural Resource and Outdoor Recreation Trust Fund. That's something that had originally been in the tax proposal, but got pulled out uh, as it got negotiated before being signed last Tuesday by Governor, uh, last week on Tuesday by Governor Reynolds. So that's something that the Senator has a lot of time and commitment devoted to. He's put in months and months of work on that bill. So he has brought forward a proposal uh, to see if it can stand on its own. And we look forward to looking at that bill and working with him on that bill. With I will is something we've long supported. One thing that we watch closely on the flip side of things, though, is that does also have some implications uh, for local option sales tax. And the mayor and other local officials have voiced some of those concerns, being that, like I said, that's about $9.8 million a year currently that goes into our infrastructure funding. So we'll watch that and monitor that and continue to have conversations to make sure if something along those lines would get done to kick in I will and that funding that we're also making sure we're taking in all considerations as necessary to make sure that our local governments are continuing to receive that local option sales tax funding. That said, we do appreciate Senator Dawson bringing forth those two bills. He's already done yeoman's work this session all with the tax bills and some of the other pieces of legislation he's working on. So we credit him for the work he's doing and bringing these pieces uh, forward as well to for continued, continued discussion and debate uh, through the rest of session. Port authorities is another bill I've talked a lot about. Um, we stand to benefit the most of likely anyone in the state of Iowa due to our connection on the riverfront to uh, Omaha and our connection to being the largest MSA in the state of Iowa as a result. One of the things that we're watching closely um, is the Farm Bureau has come out and said a few things about some concerns they have with the bill, largely due to unintended consequences of county and some other governmental usages. Uh, that's something we continue to address um, as we advocate for the bill. Um, and that's something we are enjoying uh, addressing because we really do think also not only metropolitan areas like ourselves and others throughout the state, but also rural areas could strongly benefit if utilizing this bill appropriately to the scale and scope of which it could be utilized they can stand to benefit greatly on community and economic and quality of life projects. So that's something we're really talking through as well and emphasizing the fact that it's not only urban communities that are going to benefit from the passage of the bill as proposed, it's rural communities as well uh, if they take the time and the commitment to make sure that they're utilizing it for those economic community and quality of life projects. It could provide some additional resources and opportunities to them very much so to increase investment in quality of life in their area. Workforce bills, uh, we have seen a few different pieces. There's like three different kind of pieces kind of working their way through with regards to workforce bills. There's some code-based changes that will address a lot of concerns that engineers, designers, and architects firms um, have. That one has a pretty is in a pretty good position and looks like it very well could pass this session. The one that's a little bit muddy is the one that has chosen to lump together three separate and not really tied together things together to try to get passed. And it's the unemployment changes um, that have been proposed by the House and the Senate, you know, uh, and then also the medical malpractice and trucker tort reform. 
we're supporting the bill insofar as that we very much support medical malpractice and we very much support the trucker tort reform specifically though the medical malpractice is something that makes a lot it would have a lot of impact on us as a border community for our healthcare providers as they work to attract and retain talent uh, one thing that's also important to note is these issues, the three I noted, the, the governor has uh, kind of shown some interest in those pieces of legislation in addition to the renewable fuels bill and some other pieces, uh, charter schools and public funding for uh, private education are ones that she's kind of watching really closely right now um, as we look towards the winding down of the session, having signed the tax reform bill into law. So that's something that's going to be really interesting to watch because obviously if the governor is watching and pushing for it, that can have a big effect as well, obviously, as we head towards adjournment. With regards to a budget update, the REC numbers came out and they are gonna use the December numbers uh, for, their, uh, for their budgeting processes and purposes. So they are getting close. As I've mentioned weeks ago, the budget targets in the House and the Senate uh, were out, I believe two weeks ago, uh, they were out. So that's something they've had it, those uh, numbers and those frameworks in place for the seven appropriations committees for some time now. Um, so they're gonna continue working on those pieces to get to those overall budget figures and what the uh, details need to be to get to that number within their respective caucuses and chambers, and then ultimately obviously have to come to a determination jointly uh, before they're able to get out for this session. But one thing that is important to note, the REC, the Revenue Estimating Conference met this week. Um, we did see increase in revenues currently, but in projected years, we did see um, the revenues going down a little bit. That's to be expected. That's something as we talked about tax reform, we thought that would happen. Uh, but obviously one of the things that was talked about as we look at the potential for growth, um, economic growth and tax revenue growth through other streams uh, in the state in the state uh, revenue collection mechanisms, that's something we are gonna continue to watch obviously and monitor closely to make sure that we can continue to do some of the great things that us and other advocacy or business advocacy organizations are doing to try to make sure that we're moving our communities and our state forward in the best manner possible. With that, I will close this week's weekly legislative update. I do want to uh, take one second to just note the fact we did have our annual event uh, the evening of Thursday, March 10th, and I wanted to commend our staff for one, for doing an exemplary job and handling and orchestrating that event, but especially call out Kim Boothie. She does an outstanding job uh, planning not only the annual event, but all of our events. And I just wanted to thank her for the time and dedication she put forward in that. I also wanted to thank our leadership, um, you know, Evan, obviously, for the role he played in the presentation, our speaker, Jim Miller, but then also the Mac and all others that we worked with to make sure that that event was, went as well as it did. But also, finally, all of the members and all the community leaders and such that attended the event. Uh, it was so great to get everyone together, and we really did enjoy it and have a very nice time celebrating the good things that we have going on in our community. And I think it really did show that we have a lot to be excited about currently. And there's a ton of opportunities and reasons to be excited about looking into the future as well. So we thank you all for continue, your continued support of the Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce, in this case, specifically our public policy program. And we look forward to continuing to bring great resources, information and insight to you in the times ahead. Thanks and have a nice rest of the day.